I'm Christina. Welcome to the Signature Chefs of Orlando at Crave Restaurant near the Mall at Millennia. Crave focuses on fresh and innovative cuisine and an impeccable wine selection brought to life in a chic, casual environment. Today, our executive chef is preparing Crave specialties, and we look forward to seeing you at Crave soon. Hey, welcome to another edition of Signature Chefs of Orlando. My name is Tuan, I'm the head sushi chef here at Crave Orlando. Uh, Orlando is a Minneapolis-based company. We have three locations in Minneapolis, one in Orlando, and we just opened one in Omaha, Nebraska, with a few uh, more to come. Uh, today I'm going to be showcasing uh, some of one of our signature rolls, as well as some other sushi items we have available here at Crave. So today we're going to start with our nori, which is a roasted seaweed. Um, typically we use half a sheet of nori, but today with this roll we're going to be using one full sheet. And in order for it to stick together, we like to wet uh, a seam and then just place it there so it acts like glue. Um, an important thing about sushi, uh, probably the most important thing, is to always have your hands wet so that way the rice won't stick. Um, and a lot of times people make the mistake of having their hands too wet. So a trick that all sushi chefs do, and you probably see it when you go eat sushi, is they'll clap their hands like that to get all the excess water off. So with that being said and done, let's start with this roll. It's called our Mexican roll, and it was created by one of our chefs back home in Minneapolis, and it's probably one of our most popular rolls. So with the rice, you want to spread it evenly across all the way and then just gently pull it down. The thing that you want to avoid when making sushi at home is smashing the rice. The rice will move itself and all it takes is just a little bit of manipulation. So if you can see, the rice is still keeps its whole integrity and it's beautiful. So we have rice here and then we have our spicy mayo, which we make in house. Everything, every one of our sauces is made in house. So depending on how much mayo you like, you can add a little bit, a lot, or you can just leave it out. Um, so we have a little bit of spicy mayo and jalapenos. Um, an easy way to get the seeds out of the jalapeno is to just cut the flesh. So you just cut the flesh like so and rotate it, and that way you can keep the seeds out of your roll and out of your mouth. And then we'll just gently place it across here and then avocado. Um, the easiest way to get the avocado meat out of the shell is to just use a spoon and scrape it out. And you just scrape it out and place it evenly across, like so. And then for the fishes that we use, we use yellowfin tuna, which you see here. I have some slices here. Just place it across. Then we also use Escalar, which is a deep sea fish off the coast of Chile. Um, and just like so, when you're making sushi, you're making a roll, you want to keep everything centered and in line so that way it's easier to roll. And then a little cilantro. You can't have Mexican food without cilantro. So just place a little bit across. If you, see, if you have a lot of thick stems, you can omit that. And now this is the fun part. A lot of people like to use a bamboo mat to roll the roll. I just like to use it to shape the roll at the end. It makes it so much easier. So, and all you do is when you roll, you want to roll it forward and kind of tuck everything back. You want to kind of tighten it up. And just roll it forward. Pretty much straight forward, done, easy. And then use this bamboo mat. Squish down the sides and Push the insides in, and just like so, you have one sushi roll, right like that. All right, we'll set that aside for now. Um, another part of component of sushi is nigiri. Now, nigiri is fish placed on top of rice, which I have here. I have salmon, and once again, I have escalar. And I'll show you how to make it with tuna. 
So a general rule about making sashimi and nigiris is pristine fish. Um, and then for nigiri, the size that you want would be about a little less than a quarter inch thick, two finger widths like so, and four fingers long. So that would be perfect one bite nigiri. So, and then with the rice, just have about like a large marble size, like so. Pick up your rice, pick up your fish, a little dab of wasabi, just right like that. Put it on top, and you want to make a little air pocket. So when you eat it, it crumbles in your mouth. And the trick is, this looks, this is a lot harder than it actually looks. So the trick is to push the ball of rice up into the fish at the same time you're using your fingers to drape the fish down, and that way you have one piece of nigiri. A traditional nigiri order has two pieces. You can go to some places, they'll give you three, or they'll sell it by the single piece. So you can just repeat the process. And the key to making good nigiri is to not to touch the fish for too long because your body temperature will increase the temperature of the fish. So now we have some nigiris here. You can plate on a sushi boat. You can get sushi boats at Asian specialty stores or if you're crafty enough, you can make your own. So just like so, place right there. And for our Mexican roll, we can slice it up. Uh, a trick to cutting clean sushi is to have a very sharp knife and also to wet your knife. Now, you also see a lot of sushi chefs bang their knives like that. That helps the water run down the length of the blade. So you can cut like so, even pieces. And every so often, wipe down your knife because you have mayonnaise inside, you have avocado inside, and you don't want all that stuff leaking on the edges and making your roll look dirty. Just slice, even slice, clean your knife. And make sure that you're showing off your ingredients to your guests and your friends. And then another component of our sushi platter and sushi would be um, sashimi. Sashimi is just slices of fish. Um, and today, I also have salmon here. So with sashimi, what you want is nice, clean, compact piece of fish, like so. Make it look very nice and beautiful. Um, and just like cutting meat, you want to cut fish against the grain. So once again, um, wet your knife, sharp knife. This knife is called a yanagiba, which is used by sushi chefs to slice fish, um, as well as to fillet fish. Now this is a lot different than a Western style knife, where this is only sharp on one side and flat on the other. So with sashimi, you want to cut about three quarters of an inch thick pieces. Any more would just be too much, and then the, it, it will feel weird in your mouth when you eat it. So you have that cut, set aside. You have escalar, it's nice and white. Slice through, slice through, set that aside. Now we have a tuna. And there's many different ways that you can cut um, and shape your sashimi, but the straightforward traditional cut is usually the best and most attractive. Um, and so another component of um, sushi that's very important is also garnish. Uh, you can do extravagant garnishes, you know, carving butterflies out of carrots and whatnot. But to me, I like to keep it simple. I like to keep it clean and neat. Right here we have uh, uh, shaved daikon radish, and then we have shaved carrots. So that can be a backdrop right here. Then also for some green, have some shiso leaf right here. And shiso leaf has a flavor cross between mint and basil. So you can eat it um, between bites to kind of uh, replenish your palate, cleanse your palate. And then also cucumber fan. Cutting cucumbers at, an, at a bias. 
just like so. And then what you can do is you just take your cucumber and just like deck of cards, just spread it out like so. You can place that right here, just like that. And your fish, everything you want to do when you're presenting, you want to stand it up. That middle. Some of that right there. And some salmon. And then for little garnishes, you have these little, uh, we call them sushi rabbits. They're made of lemons. You just place them strategically throughout. And then to finish it off, we have a little bit of ginger and a wasabi leaf. And to finish our roll and finish our dish, uh, we're gonna dress our roll. This is a ponzu sauce, which is a citrus soy that we make here. Just drizzle it over the top. Like so. And then we also have a chili oil that we make here. Just drizzle it over the top. And garnish it with some And that's it. You can make this at home, impress all your friends. And uh, once again, thank you for watching this episode of Signature Chefs of Orlando. My name is Tuan. Hopefully, see you next week.